Now, my guest today is someone that you have seen before, but you probably look at him with like a, mm, this person, I know him. Like he is, we know him, we all do, I promise you. But he's one of those people that just, you know, works and just doesn't bother anyone, ever. Now, he has over 20 years in the entertainment industry. Richard and Nadi could be called a connoisseur of entertainment. Yeah, from his journey in light life to his foray into food. Richard, I am so happy to have you. I feel like I know you, but then I don't know you. But I feel like I know you. You're welcome to Arise 360. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you very much. I'm really excited to be here, by the way. We're uh, so happy to have it's you. It's really We're, amazing. <laughs> We're so happy to have you. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, Richard, I feel like your story is one that I follow you on Instagram. And when I listen to you speak, the short videos that you do, big shout out to your you know, video editor guy because he gets the angles right. The videos that you put out comes from a place of a wealth of experience. So what's your story? What's your journey? You know, like I said, nightlife to food. Like, yo, how? Who does that? How did that happen for you? Um, okay, so I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, so growing up, like when I was younger, I think I got into nightlife when I was, what, 20? And, you know, back then I was just in Unilag back, back in the day and I just stand at the door and let people into the club. And that was a place called Case Place. And that is where your SIP, oh, sorry, your 245 is today. Um, and back then from going through that process to now going into PR and then opening my own nightclub, um, I realized what I was good at wasn't nightlife, but rather I was excellent at marketing. So when my nightlife experience ended due to bad management and if I say not as much experience as I had now, so I consider escape like a learning process. Um, but now, I, after coming out from that space, I realized exactly what my, I was good at and then I just focused on what my skill was. And since then, it's not just been food, but also a list of businesses I also cannot speak about. But yes, it's just understanding and growing from experience, I believe. That's exactly the crux of the conversation that we're having today because growing through difficulties is hard because when you're going through a really tough time, sometimes you cannot see any other way. So at what point did you realize that this is a mistake, like with regards to you, the wrap up of escape and moving on from the nightlife, at what point did you say, you know what, lesson, lesson learned, <sighs> moving on to the next, that growth in the midst of such a difficult difficult situation because it was all over the news that was a difficult place but we don't, mm. we, i mean we don't even need to mm -hmm. get into that because everyone i believe <laughs> but the point yeah, is it was a yeah, difficult situation <laughs> exactly it was a difficult place but then you climbed out of it like you you climbed your way out so at what point did you realize that okay you know what i'm shifting gear okay so uh, i i like to say this so aside from being Aside from being, uh, a, I consider myself a macro marketing hacking specialist. I am a serial entrepreneur, meaning I know how to, I know how to move. I know how to see opportunity. I don't dwell too much on things that hold me back. I, I, it's a skill, um, and I, I guess it comes from failing over and over and over again. My loud, my probably my loudest failure was escape, which is what everybody knew about. But before then, there has also been. A lot of mess ups before escape became a success and then went into being a failure. But um, I guess I'm just used to picking myself back up and understanding that failing is not the end. Failing is actually the beginning of a better step. So, like I said, I went from nightlife selling premium products where you're selling a bottle of champagne for a million to going into where I sell a plate of food for 5,000. First of all, the market of the one million naira bottles is limited to a you know, limited amount of people. Let's say 0.5% of the economy can afford to go into that life. But meanwhile, food has a larger market, which also makes you understand that because something doesn't work in this space doesn't mean you can't work in this other space. You just need to understand and learn from experience. And that way, you can easily transition. So when you say you are a growth hacking marketing um, specialist, I never heard that before. 
So break it down for us. How do you hack growth? <sighs> and then how do you market it after hacking it? <laughs> So um, there's a bit of reverse engineering when it comes to that for me because um, people think growing wealth or growing businesses is a big deal. But usually everything you need to succeed is usually just everywhere around you. You know, it's not that difficult. If I, for instance, we went into the food business um, and during that period of going into the food business, we realized that we could diversify into other um, locations and then from other locations now we're opening in London. It's just the ability to not stretch yourself too thin, but also keep yourself tight and concentrate and focus on exactly what you have, right? So food is not just about selling food. You can come into selling spices. You can come into um, even going into as much as owning a farm but it's all in the same space. You don't have to look too far away from what you're doing or look at what other people are doing to decide what your growth will be. Everything, especially wealth and growth, is first internal. Once you internalize it, you can visualize it and you can experience it. So would you say that, because when I look at, uh, to be clear, Eve After Dark is under JJB Food Concept, correct? No. <laughs> okay. Funny that you mentioned JJB food. Concept. Yeah. So, so, how does what's the separation between so JJB food concept? Yeah. Um, okay. So, Eve After Dark food concept is Eve After Dark. Um, JJB food concept is Jazzy's Burger. Separate. And that's a collaboration between Don Jazzy and I to create the Jazzy Burger that we know today. You're very good with marketing food. Or is that just what you just mentioned about internalizing it and pushing it? Because you've marketed Eve After so, Dark so well. It's not that just food. Talk to me, yeah. It's not just food. Um, marketing is not um, designed for just one product. If you're mm. good at marketing, it can be anything. It can be from image creation to technology, to anything, once you can see, um, once you can understand the opportunity and you can understand human behavior, you can sell anything to anybody. Mm. I like that. <laughs> I really like that. That's, that's, that's just what it is. It's not, it's, not, it's not really that complicated, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So with regards to your persona, you are a popular person. Would you say that in a way is necessary for a successful business? Because now on social media, uh, we find that a lot of business owners have to be almost influencers simultaneously. So based on your assessment, your experience, is this a necessity to marketing in today's world? So I will say starting a small business because all my businesses start small. And when you're growing something small, the biggest person who can support you first is you. People rely on the energy you provide towards your business to provide you support. Meaning, if you start something today, there's a huge, there's a huge probability that a lot of people will not come up and say, oh, you know, Richard, I see what you're starting. You know, I, I, I support you. They will see you, but it, they, they can only react based on the kind of energy you put into your product. If you believe in your product, if you believe in your in, in what your or your service, and you do it long enough and you have good reviews, people start to align. That's just what it is. But people will say to you, "Oh, um, I don't want to start my brand, and people will know I own this brand." That's one way to think about it. But when you're a small business and you're starting a small business, you need to put yourself out there. Till when the brand or the product you're trying to promote becomes bigger than you, then you can retreat. Have you then ever... You move back and step outside, yes. Have you ever been in a position where you didn't want to be identified with any of your businesses? Which, by the way, I think at this junction, it's important that you list them so that we know what is what. <laughs> Uh, so I, 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 I definitely cannot list my businesses because I have NDAs 
<laughs> I have a lot I of so. around me. I thought but, so. Um, I, I do, I, 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 I sit and I work with a lot of brands that a lot of people know. Um, I'm also a strong believer of creating my own competition. That way we have a back-end monopoly style of business. You see, I need, I need you to um, just, if you can break <laughs> this part down for me, Richard, you would, have done it, you would have done it all. How do you quietly do, because I mean, I know that you are, everyone has challenges, but you are a successful businessman. But how are you quietly able to do this? How are you able to, you know, keep your relationship, keep your contact? You, you, you've, I mean, I don't think you've mentioned anyone, but you've called out the industry to say, you guys are just a bunch of people that, do, that just say one thing and another. You guys are owing my club and stuff like that. A lot of people will say, once you call out the industry, they are, they'll, they'll cancel you. But look at you today, like you are thriving yeah. quietly. You know, I just asked you to list your businesses. I could say that to another person. They'll give me 20. But you're just like, yo, okay, let's keep it <laughs> private. So I need to understand, how do you do that? What is that thing you know about yourself or you believe in that is like, see, it is what it is. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. You can be out there and not be out there. And, you know, you can also build... So, first of all, your brand is pretty much your persona. Um, I love to live and love <laughs> my wife privately, but I also like to live for everyone else. I'm also very big on networking. I consider myself an A&R for stars. I believe I look at people who um, today... Let's say I, I look at someone who is starting up something and I see that spark. And I guess it's because I, I see in them what I see in myself. So when I see people who I believe that are not big today, but in the next three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, will become top in what they do, I align. I start building my network with you. I start supporting you from the beginning. I start, it's not always about giving people money, but just encouraging them. I say, look, bro, I know this thing is hard. Yo, sis, I know it's not looking easy, but just keep going. I see exactly where you're going to be because I see and I am very clear as to who you will become. And I work on that network. I constantly check on people that um, I believe in. And yeah, none of my beliefs or people I believe in have let me down so far. So yeah. That's a good and thing. And yes, you have to have integrity. Mm. You have to have integrity. Integrity is very rare in today's market. A lot of people don't have integrity. I can, there are very few people who say something and do it, but there are also a, there are also a fewer more people who say they will do something and surpass what they say they will do. What's the biggest challenge you would say facing and sticking to the creative industry? Because I think at this point, a lot of businesses might fall under that based on the strategy that they've adopted with regards to their marketing. There's a part of creativity to that. So what would you say are the, some of the challenges that you have observed that faces a lot of creatives today? Some people say it's the lack of ring lights, but based on your assessment, what do you think the challenges, <laughs> the real challenges are? Okay, so... Coming from a transition from analog to digital, um, I believe I have seen a transition through time. And I understand and I appreciate how easy it is today, based on the internet and things on ground, to move swiftly. Um, if you understand what you never had, you will appreciate exactly what you have today. People think they, have to, they need to have everything perfectly before they start something. But that's not how to start. You start first, you make that mistake, you correct it, you go back, you create some more. People also worry about what other people think or how people perceive them. For you to succeed, you have to be able to do things the way you see them. And I tell you, if you continue in that sphere or in that focus, people start seeing you in that light and people are lying. You know, and that's just how it is. You need to focus on why you're here, what you want to achieve, and just drown everything else. People have opinions, yes. I have an opinion, yes. But it should not affect 
me or anyone else who has a focus or in terms of what they want to achieve. That's all. I'm going to ask you a weird question. If you could go like advice yourself 10 years ago, what's the biggest advice that you would give to yourself knowing what you know now, like a decade ago? Ooh. Enjoy the process. Um, <laughs> failure, like I said before, is not, it's not a bad thing. I, I believe I am here today because of all the mistakes I made in my past. I believe I am here today because I have started businesses, failed quite a few times, and starting again wasn't just starting from scratch, it was starting from experience. I had, before now, um, had a lot of good relationships, but it also led me to finding out what a perfect and amazing type of wife I needed, and it directed me into marrying the right type of woman. There is nothing that is a waste of time. There is nothing that is a loss. Everything you go through in life is a learning process. You will learn how to fail. You will learn how to live. And of course, you will learn how to love. You know, it's so refreshing to me when I have men come on a rise 360 and then they talk about their wives, you know, like with the same amount of energy. <laughs> no, I'm not even going to lie because I talk about pop culture. And if you know anything about this industry, they all, we always try yeah, to project the negative yeah. when it comes to relationships and romance and love. But look at you. We've talked, I tagged this conversation steps to growth, you know, in the industry. And we've talked about that extensively for the last few minutes. But then you are clearly a lover. So you can be a champion and a lover at the same time and you will not die. Correct? <laughs> of course you can. Of course you can. Um, it's also, high, also very highly dependent on who you get married to. <laughs> um, my wife totally completes me. Um, she's everything I am not, and everything I am too old to learn, she has it in perfection. So I consider, I consider us a team, you know, and I consider us best friends before I even say, oh, she's my wife. We have everything in totality because I knew exactly what I wanted based on, you know, previous good relationships that I had. But when I saw something really amazing, there was no way I wasn't into her line. She's totally my better half. I love <laughs> so it. So if you marry the right person who completes you, right, you can look at it just like I look at business, right? You must understand not what your strengths are, but also focus on what you don't have. That way, you know what you need. Hmm. I hope someone took that down, though. Quick question. Why do they call you the Duke of Spades? That's your Instagram name. Ah. That's an interesting question. Yes. Uh, Why? <laughs> uh, uh, I, I really can never answer this question, but it came from... Um, <laughs> I had this name like a long time ago. I think it was also my black my BBM messenger handle, <laughs> and then from there went into Instagram and it transcended. But um, it came from someone I knew in my past who had something similar, and then I really liked it, so I kind of adopted it. Well, I like it. I think that- And it's stuck. It's stuck, it's a, like, that's what I'm trying to say, like, it's actually stuck. I bet you sometimes people are like, yo, um, Duke of Spades, <laughs> before they even say your actual name, Richard. Yeah. But Richard, I mean, this conversation was packed, and that's I true. really, Really, I'm so happy that I got to have this conversation with you. Because like I said, you, 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 you're you not selfish Thank with your you. wisdom. You're not. You share it on your social media. And you've shared it today on Arise 360. And I'm grateful yes, for do. that. Thank you for joining me on the show today. Thank you very much. Indeed.